Yo, what's up guys? Welcome back to our second video of this series, Game Reviews Inside Roblox. In today's video, we'll be looking at good old blood and iron inside Roblox, but before we get into the video itself, I would like to take a little time to apologize for you guys for being inactive for over one month. I have so much work to do, but since school is finishing in two days, I'll try to make as much video as possible in the short amount of time. So yeah, that is what I had to say, and let's get into our main video. Alright, so let's start our video. The usual way giving you guys some basic info about the game before we proceed into the deeper details so this game is developed by a guy named coder qwerty according to the roblox page of this game sorry if i pronounce your name wrong but nice name but according to the final page of this game there are technically four people contributing to this amazing game but let's get back to our point this game is the quote napoleonic era end quote game and this means that it's a game where player fight in team using muskets and melee weapon in a historical battle map like the battle of Arcol, the battle of Papelote and more. The rest of the video will be covering a section about the game like the graphics, gameplay and all of that. So let's talk about the main story of this game. So this game doesn't have a static story like Operation Overlord or Eastern Front because this game has different maps for different nations and also different classes for different maps. I know it might be confusing but stick around, I'll, I'll try to explain it. Say, Operation Overlord has one map which is the D-Day Normandy map because the game revolved around that one battle. But this game revolved around the whole Napoleonic War as a whole which means that you can play as many nations and many battles. So there is no one main setting of the game, all maps are unique and different. Say the Battle of Arcole, which is a real battle between the French and the Austrian. This game have a map called the Battle of Arcole or the Bridge of Arcole in this game. And it is played between the French team and the Austrian team. So specifically for that match you can only pick between two countries either the French or the Austrian if you want to play as the Prussian or the English in that map you can't since this game is about different nations fighting each other let's take a look at what nation this game has to offer I will list all of them here so here are around nine countries inside the game and these are one the United Kingdom or the British Empire two the French Empire or the first French Empire to be more specific three the Kingdom of Prussia which let's say is Germany fourth the Duchy of Nassau which is part of modern-day Germany. Fifth is the Russian Empire or Russia. Sixth is the Austrian Empire, Austria. Seventh is the Kingdom of Bavaria, also part of modern-day Germany. Eighth is the Duchy of Warsaw or Poland. And last but not least is the Brunswick Dual Corp, aka the Black Brunswick also the German. So yeah, this game has nearly all the nations that took part in the Napoleonic War but I think it is missing Italy but it's no big deal because you have nine different nations and you're, you're not gonna get tired of all of them. Alright so since we talk about the nations inside this game let's spend some time and talk about the maps of this game. Since we have like nine nations inside this game and technically all of them are just fighting each other you'll be expecting a lot of maps inside this game which is the case and I'll be listing some of them here. I will not list all of them but I will mention a few which is some of my favorites. So the first one is of course the Bridge of Arcole, France versus Austria. Second one is the Iberian Harbor which is the Brunswick versus the French. Third one is the Road to Smolensk, the Russian versus the Polish, Steppe, France versus Russia, Hilltop Outpost. Austria versus the Kingdom of Bavaria, Farmlands, the United Kingdom versus France, and last but not least, Wooded Crest, the French versus the Austrian. Note that these are not all the maps inside the game. I'm just mentioning a few of them, but you can check the entire map list in the fandom page, which I will be including a link in this video description if you would like to check it. All right, so let's talk about the uh, important aspect of the game, which is the graphics. Well, looking from the game page inside Roblox, we know that this game doesn't have a uh, very good graphics to offer such as those of the unit 1968 or some roblox shooter game but i'm not saying that this graphics of the game is bad for roblox standard this game actually have a very decent graphics but having this low graphics mean that this game have one advantage over other roblox games and of course i'm talking about the game's performance 
and some good amount of player inside this game who enjoy it because it runs well in nearly all of the PC. I'm pretty sure that you can get a good 60 or more FPS on a normal PC but with an FPS unlocker and a decent computer like mine, you can expect to play this game at a smooth 100 and more FPS. The reason why this game has such a high performance can be looked into the details. So this game doesn't have a great detail offering like other games. The weapon in the map is made out of blocks but I'm not saying it, it's bad again. It is just simplicity. It just doesn't use a lot of decal or model. So let's take a look at muskets for example. Alright, so let's talk about the map design of this game. So the building and the map inside this game looks okay because I can tell that it is entirely handcrafted by the developer. Such graphics like these also give the simplicity feeling to this kind of game that you know just relaxing smooth simple game to play when you're bored so here let me show you some details and map design from different maps across the game so you can analyze it Okay, so let's talk about the character design. So it is same also, the level of simplicity is noticeable and the details on the character looks pretty decent not gonna lie. The character is just your typical R6 Roblox character with uniform and other gear that differ from countries to countries and class to class. One more thing cool about this game is that you can actually customize your character so you know you can add some you know hair color and little details into your face but you can do a lot of stuff. So let me choose some different characters from different countries and compare it to each other so you can analyze it. So yeah, here's the clip. Alright, so let's talk about the main part of this video, which is the gameplay of the game. So I will be give you an explanation what this game is about and how you can play it, but not a full tutorial. So this game, like I mentioned, is a Napoleonic war style game that you will spawn in as one of the nation that I just mentioned earlier in the video. Although there are 9 nations in the game, each battle will only have 2 nations engaged and battling for each other. And this also depends on the map of the game. Say people vote for the the bridge of our cold then there are only two options for you to choose from which is the French or the Austrian and yes this game people do vote for map so after you select your nation you can also have the option to switch nation if you wanted to and after that you have like 20 seconds depends to choose your class and your roles and go inside battle the role ranges from countries and map let me explain this so let's say that the map is step which is a large map there will be extra classes or roles such as hussars or lancer which is all under the cavalry tab if you wanted to play it smaller maps will be more likely to not have any cavalry because it makes no sense that cavalry charges in small map so let me give you a list of the classes inside this game so we have the rifleman or aka the sniper which is basically a soldier with a deadly and accurate gun with a powerful long range rifle but a very long reload rate second is the line infantry aka your normal soldier during the napoleonic war that has a little bit of everything thirdly is the captain aka the leader of he only holds pistol and swords have no rifle the fourth is the artillery man like its name suggests they operate on artillery or cannon that splash shell onto oncoming enemy the fifth one is a sapper aka the builder or the soup guy because they are pretty much a meme sixth one is the musician aka the morale booster that helps your friend by playing music so you get a faster reload and perform better in battle after choosing these classes you will be spawned into team and your objective is very very simple 
eliminate every single one of your opponent and you will win one round. I'm not sure about this but if you win like 3 rounds then they will make you roll for a new map or a new game. Some games are really annoying though because some people especially sappers will find a small corner in a room and just build everything so they can defend themselves. So yeah it was a pretty short video but welcome to the part a lot of you guys have been waiting for the conclusion and in this part I will summarize the video inside this section. So for the game as a whole I would like to rate it 4 out of 5 stars but if I would rate each aspect of the game I will do it here. So for gameplay I would give it a 4 out of 5 star. It is a good gameplay thus doesn't have a very steep learning curve. Second is the map design, I will rate it 3.5 out of 5 star, which is pretty decent but I would like to see more complexity in each map than the current one. Third one is character design, 4 out of 5 star, clothing and detail on the character is okay but I feel like there should be a little bit more detail and more customization option. Fourth one is the variety of map, I would like to give it a 5 out of 5 star because it have a very big amount of map to choose from and each of them is uniquely and handcrafted so it doesn't get boring quick. Fifth one is the variety of classes so I would like to give this a 5 out of 5 stars. Very good amount of class to choose from and player have the freedom to pick whatever they want to play. Sixth one is the game performance. I would also like to give this a 5 out of 5 stars. This one is the best because it sacrificed a little bit of graphics and detail for this very important aspect of the game which is performance. So yes I highly recommend this game to those of you have, who haven't tried it yet and support the developers who work hard on this game. This game I would say have a pretty good player base but I feel like it's still pretty underrated. Alright so that is all I have for this video. Not much to say but a highly recommended game and a good solid game after all. If you enjoyed the video please click subscribe and like because I'm aiming to reach 2k subs by the end of the year and I appreciate everyone's support and it means a lot to me. So yeah you can drop your opinion on this game in the comment section below and also tell me which game you want to see me do a review on next because I am planning to go back to Rise of Nations video. That is all I have to say for today and goodbye, stay safe.